Hey, this is Bruce Trujillo with Indy 1023 here with Amber Mark. We were introduced to her back in 2017 with her 3.33 a.m. release, and this year she's been particularly busy with her Covered 19 series, a blend of covers and originals released throughout quarantine over the past few months. Amber, thanks so much for joining me this morning. Thank you for having me. So yeah, this is a, a new kind of project series that came about pretty organically because well, I mean, what else are we going to do during quarantine and you've been really busy with doing all of these. So tell me about how this project came about. Um, it came about, I don't, I just, I did obviously nobody really knew, especially in the music world. I think the music industry kind of started freaking out as soon as um, this whole quarantine thing started happening. And uh, I was in the process of like finishing up an album technically and, you know, kind of working on the final track listing and all that stuff. And that kind of was put on pause once this whole quarantine happened. And I don't know, I just ended up deciding to put out, like I was like, oh, let me just do some covers and, you know, put them out on Instagram. Initially it was just gonna be like me throwing videos out on Instagram and just, you know, having fun with quarantine. What else is there to do but be creative really? you know, or, you know, be lazy. That's kind of my two little <laughs> levels. Um, the other. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I just, I ended up, I'd always wanted to cover um, Nirvana and I really wanted to cover Heart Shape Box. I always thought it'd be kind of cool to do like an R&B version of it. And um, so I just ended up like making a little beat and then just singing, you know, vocals, you know, covering that, the lyrics and all that stuff. And then I put it out on Instagram, like a short version of it, and it actually got quite a lot of traction. And uh, like the my digital team was like very excited about it and was like, we have to put this out. So I was like, okay, fine. Like, why don't we do them? Then they decided maybe it'd be cool to do like a little project. And it was it was exciting for me because I had put so much stress on myself um, regarding like what songs I would be putting out and like releasing on the streaming platforms. Um, and I kind of took that because it was, I was coming out with an album and I really wanted there to be like a lot of meaning behind all the songs I put out. And then I think quarantine and this whole like creative zone that I've been in recently has made me realize and kind of allowed me to have fun with it and really not take myself as an artist so seriously and just to kind of enjoy it. Because I feel like a lot of the time I would get quite a bit of anxiety regarding my album and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's kind of been a blessing in disguise, I think, this whole, um, you know, quarantine um, experience for me in a creative, you know, point of view. So, yeah, I mean, it's been awesome. I've really enjoyed it. It's just kind of like this, like, free-flowing thing. I'm not trying to put too much stress on, you know, what I'm releasing and, and just trying to have fun with it. That's awesome. Yeah, and I... I read that you had released the Nirvana's Heart Shaped Box and it was like, what is this going to sound like? And I do love your art, like kind of R&B take on it. I think it's super beautiful. What what was it about that song though, uh, specifically Heart Shaped Box that you were like, I really want to cover this one? Actually, it was a conversation that I've had with my brother before. Um, it was like last year. I was actually going on tour in Europe and there was talk of a of a cover that I had to do for a radio show in the UK. And um, I think my brother was visiting, he was in the process of moving to New York and he was visiting, trying to find an apartment and stuff like that. And I remember telling him, oh, I have to cover a song for you know, um, a radio show in the UK. And I was like, I, I really wanna do something that's like kind of out of the ordinary and like that you wouldn't expect coming from me because it's an R&B show and stuff like that. And it'd be cool to do like a, and um, he was like, oh, maybe you should cover Heart Shaped Box. And it ended up not working out. Like, I ended up not doing that. And I remember listening to that song as a kid, because he used to listen to Nirvana. He's 10 years older than me. So he used to listen to Nirvana quite a bit um, when I was younger. So I remember listening to that song as a kid. And um, I, I don't know, I've, I've always really liked that song. And I thought it would be kind of cool. Like, I was like, OK, how do I make this if like D'Angelo were to like cover um, a Nirvana track, but like with some sort of like house vibes to it. That was kind of the inspiration behind the cover and um, it just went from there. That's kind of how, I, I honestly, it was one of those situations where it was like, I spent maybe an hour tops like making just the de the, the, the basic um, one minute version of the song just for Instagram and like <laughs> threw some, you know, chords together and just like a bass line and, and, and all that. And then I just recorded some, but I like really didn't put that much effort into the song itself 
um, like whereas like in the past I always like take hours to just come up with like even just like, even for covers just kind of come up with different like runs and maybe a, a like a different chord progression you know reharming the chord progressions that the song already has originally so this was kind of one of those situations where I just really didn't I didn't put too much stress on it and it ended up working out in my advantage and it, it's kind of like enlightened me in a sense i think um creatively to realize that it, i shouldn't put so much stress on all of this stuff kind of a, a very grunge take on your r b music <laughs> which is yeah. very appropriate <laughs> but yeah it was kind of random but that's what i like about it i like the i like taking songs that you would never expect um to go that where they you know to go where i take them and kind of take them there and see where what happens with it yeah, and you're, you've already covered and released some pretty well-known covers, including Sade's Love is Stronger Than Pride and The Who's The Seeker. And both Sade and Pete Townsend have sung your praises after hearing your covers. I have to imagine that's um, kind of a thrill to hear the feedback from the songwriter, especially Sade and Pete Townsend. I Tell know. me about getting that feedback. I know, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, surreal. I, I definitely... The Sade one was like a shock because I look up to her so much and just like, you know, as an artist and her voice is so beautiful. And, um, so I, I really like the one. So how that happened, I had, you know, made the cover, but I had rearranged the cover. And in order to release a cover that's been rearranged, you have to have it approved by the writers. So um, luckily, it's like someone on my uh, British label side was part of signing Sade, you know, back in the day. And he was like, oh, I'm having lunch with her on Wednesday, darling. Like, I'll just go take it to, you know? And I was like, oh my God, like having an internal <laughs> panic attack knowing. And it was like, I think it was like four days prior that he had told me that. So each and every day I'm like having an internal panic attack. She's going to hate it. She's going to hate it. She's going to be like, who is this woman? Like trying to be like, you know, trying to take my like song or something. I don't know. But I, she ended up really liking, he sent, he sent me an email back, like with um, some words from her and wishing and she was wishing me like the best of luck and she, how she absolutely loves what I had done with the track and all this stuff so it's still like I, the fact that she even knows who I am or like I guess knew for a mi uh, like two minutes and however long the second the, the cover is um knows who I am was pretty surreal for me and then Pete Townsend was like that's crazy because like um he also has mutual friends through some British people a lot of these <laughs> You got those connections. Um, yeah, it's really <laughs> weird. And so, I, like, I've always been a fan of The Who, and I thought it'd be kind of cool to do a cover of The Who, because once again, that's like, you wouldn't expect some sort of, like, R&B version of that. Um, and so, I obviously, I made this, I kind of did that cover, like, for him, because I've always, you know, he's such a legend to me, and the fact that he liked it. I was, again, very nervous to put it out, because, you know, I tagged him in it, and I was kind of afraid he would see it and be like, <laughs> no, but he, he really liked it so that's good hopefully it continues that way with the covers I put out yeah no kidding you're on a roll it's got to keep going upward so uh you also just released last month a cover of Eddie Kendrick's My People um tell me more about releasing this one especially last month I mean you released it on your Instagram on Juneteenth so tell me more about this one um so I had covered that song like with the same tour that I was talking about last year that I did, um, we, I would do, I did a gov ball show. That was kind of like the start of my tour. And um, I really, like I had this whole arrangement that I had set up for the gov ball show. It was like this big production. It's probably the biggest like amount of effort I put into a show. Um, Cause we had, you know, we had dancers and all that stuff like that. And when I put the arrangement together, I, I I'd heard that song, the Eddie Kendricks, um, my people and immediately like fell in love with it. And then I heard, you know, Erica Badu's version of it, which is also absolutely amazing. And I really wanted to do it for a live show because I thought it's like really moving and I feel like it has such a good message. And then I never, I remember my band always being like, oh, you should put that song out actually and not just, we shouldn't just do it for live shows and whatnot. And then I just, it just never, like, I never, you know, followed through with it. And then, you know, in the light of everything that's been happening recently, I kind of was like, I want to, I want to do something. What are all the, you know, each and everything that I can possibly do, I want to try and do. And um, so the obviously, you know, putting out some sort of music or some sort of something that could aid, you know, financially, I thought my people would be ideal since I've already kind of made, I had already kind of made a cover to it and it has such a beautiful message. And 
Um, so yeah, I just, I went back to an old session I had made for a live show and I just ended up working on the song further and adding a bunch of harmonies and just kind of going in on it. And then, um, I, you know, we put it out, I made like a video, I last minute called the dancers who were part of the concert and I was like, can you guys please just like do the choreography? I'm like filming with my iPhone. <laughs> like, a lot of people are like, oh, I like the video, but you're not really in it. I'm like, yeah, that's because I'm filming. <laughs> <laughs> on a very tight budget <laughs> everyone's in quarantine still yeah exactly um so but it ended up being really beautiful and i think we just shot it on my my godparents like they own a restaurant on the rooftop of the building and like it was it's ended up being really beautiful and so i'm really happy with it yeah it's gorgeous it's on her instagram right now so you can check it out um what is it about reworking and covering a song that you like so much um, I think it's like one of those things where you listen to a song, especially, you know, older songs and you're kind of like, I think you, I see the beauty in them and, and I feel like I go like mentally, I'm attracted to so many different types of genres. And sometimes I like, sometimes you hear a song and you're like, ah, you're like, I wish I had done that song, you know, or something like that. So I always feel kind of like, um, it would be fun to, to do my own little interpretation of certain songs that I look up to that are inspiring to me, whether it doesn't matter what genre they're in, you know? Um, so I, I really enjoy it. I think it's fun. It's also, you know, people are connected to a lot of classics or a lot of songs and it reminds them of their childhood. So I think it can be exciting um, to, like if an artist that they like, you know, does a different take on a song from their childhood, and we, you know, you can connect with fan that way and whatnot or they may actually hate it they could be like huge nirvana fans and be like this r &B track is just graceful to what have you done like <laughs> but um uh, for the most part it's been positive <laughs> yeah i mean and i think also having it be a, like in a totally different genre it gives it a new life and yeah just a, a good way to connect with different people because i mean i'm sure that people have found your music through these different covers like yeah oh, yeah there's, there's, and it, and it brings light to like, a, I think a lot of the younger generations that don't even know like some of the artists. Um, like I always feel like sometimes they'll be like, oh my God, I love this song from uh, like, I love is stronger than pride. I'll get a lot of tags about that. And I'm kind of like, it's not my song guys. Like this is, this is Sade. You need to know who this woman is. Let me is. tell you about Sade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the educational tool. Um, yeah. But of course, you're you're also writing your own music, and we'll get into a few of these new ones that you've released as well. Um, but first, take me through your process for writing a song. You write, perform, and produce your music. Yeah, um, for the most part, two or three tracks that I've put out in the past have been uh, uh, produced by other people, but I've always been, you know, part of the writing process. Um, but yeah, I write and produce, I would turn the camera around, but my little studio area is an like absolute mess, so I'm not gonna show you. <laughs> understood, understood. But I think you can see like one of my speakers right over there in the mirror. <laughs> um, so yeah, I write and produce everything right over there. And um, I don't know, I just kind of, I start with a beat or I'll have like an idea of something I wanna write about, or I'll just come up with like a chord progression or whatever, and sometimes, it takes hours, like I said, sometimes like with Love Me Write, it was like within, I think I was like quite emotional when I wrote it. So it was quite easy to like write about what I was feeling. Um, but it just, it's always really different. I don't really have a formula. I always start with some sort of foundation of a, of a production to write a melody, like to sing a melody off of. And then I'll go into vocals and I'll do like, I'll literally sing gibberish into a microphone for like about 45 minutes. and. If I find something I like, then I'll try and piece it together. Oh, this sounds like it would be a good verse. Oh, this section sounds like it could be a, you know, a good chorus or a pre or whatever. Um, and then I'll work from there and I'll try to come up with lyrics. And um, if by then, like, I've come up with lyrics and I have a melody, like basic verse, pre, chorus, you know, melody or wh whatever type of um, formula I'm using, then, and if I don't hate it by then, then I'll, then I'll further, you know, then I'll go into the production more and I'll try and build the beat more and all of that stuff. And um, then I, you know, kind of, I guess I send it off to the label. Here's a demo, demo, it's not done yet. Please don't like use your imagination here, <laughs> like that type of stuff. And then, you know, I'll, sometimes I'll take a break from it and come back to it weeks later, or sometimes I'll feel like it's ready, done and fully ready to be mixed. With all the stuff that I've done in, in quarantine, I've kind of, like I said, I, I haven't really put so much stress on it. So I, I don't really spend too much time being like, 
nitpicky or like trying to figure out like what exactly like this feels wrong like this sound like I'm not going to spend like three hours like I normally do like searching through different sounds like synthesizers trying to figure out which one would be the best but um uh which has been kind of challenging but also exciting because it's like I don't like I give myself more of a time limit you know and that's kind of how it works I mean I don't know it, it always changes and I'm always learning from other producers as well working with other producers like I spent a week in Ojai in December before the quarantine happened. And um, I was with like four or five different producers in a house and we were just working on a bunch of songs for the album. And it was just so, it was like such a dope learning, learning experience because they're all super fast and like amazingly talented and like with all the, you know, with their, their DAW programs, whatever they use, Ableton Logic. Um, luckily some of them use Logic because that's what I use. Right. <laughs> so I learned a, a, quite a bit from them. So I've definitely taken a lot and I think I've like, learned so much already in it just you know within a year of um i think i'm like a completely different producer than i was last year which is always so exciting to you know experience and see and like i think i questioned myself a lot and then you know this whole uh quarantine where i was just like let me just i don't need to like go to a producer and be like does this sound good like let me just put it out and that kind of was confirmation for me that i i kind of know what i'm doing when i'm like pressing random buttons on my screen <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I've had a couple of interviews with him the past like year and a half where people are like, you kind of got to know how to produce your own stuff. And then also being able to step into that power and be like, oh, I know what I want this to sound like. And I kind of yeah. know how to do it. So I'm just going to do it. Um, yeah, so I yeah. think that's super exciting. But let's get into 1894. It's one that we have been playing here a lot on Indie 1023. Um, it's really about harnessing like your power and your sexuality yeah. as a woman. Tell me more about writing 1894. <laughs> so 1894 was I think I had had was going through like a big trap phase I was listening to a lot of like Megan Thee Stallion and all that stuff and a lot of old school like um Biggie and stuff like that I'm a huge tribe fan and so I kind of wanted they always use like a very dry um very prominent bass line like 808 line and I really wanted a song that was literally just like some trap drums and a bass basically and I got kind of tipsy and I just like ended up making the beat and like uh, again literally yelling gibberish into my microphone and I was kind of like what does this song sound like and I remember like I think I gibber like I had gibberish like I'm a flex on the blood I don't mean I like just started yelling into the microphone that I was like that's kind of that's kind of catchy you know I'm just gonna keep that so I just went off of that and came up with like a little rap verse um through that and was kind of like I feel like this song this was a conversation that I'd had with my sister and one of my really close friends like about when we used to go out, <laughs> we don't go out anymore, but um, uh, about when we used to like go out to like, you know, a, a bar, whether it be a DJ or a club where, you, you know, you'd go dancing and like, you know, guys would just like, you'd be with your girls, right? And like guys would just come up to you and like start like grinding up behind you. And you're kind of like, no, like this is not the moment. I'm not trying to like, and they take that kind of as more of like, a, oh, actually like, I felt like it was always such an awkward encounter between the female and the male in the club. And I really wanted to kind of touch on that of like how like, you know, you, you could be like dancing all sexy, but it's not like you're really doing it for this like random dude to come up and grind up behind you. Like you're just trying to have a good time and like feel the music and just releasing energy and having fun with your girls and stuff like that. And so I really wanted to kind of have a fun song talking about that and like how we shouldn't have to feel like, um, I guess, self-conscious about wanting to like, you know, wear something cute and sexy and like you're doing it for yourself. And it's like for, for the inner feeling of feeling sexy internally, not really feel, not doing it just for a, you know, a man or a woman, whoever you're trying to attract to see you. It's more so just to, to for you to feel sexy. And so I kind of went off of that as well. It, it was like multiple conversations I'd had with, especially with my sister about how we would always get frustrated. And we'd always like kind of, try to like utilize the line of like oh like we're dating type thing like and how that would intrigue a man even more and it's kind of like no this is the opposite of what i'm trying to do i'm trying to tell you i'm taken <laughs> but of Please. course you know. <laughs> exactly well but, um, i think the the music video for this one is kind of great too you recorded it in quarantine as well but it's you and your dancers you've got the masks on and you're dancing yeah. like actually it's actually the two friends that i was talking about oh, right. I didn't get dances <laughs> at the time because it was like full-on quarantine it wasn't even like that in between post quarantine so i was like 
I had to like ask my sister and my friend who lives across the street, who was kind of like our quarantine buddy, if they could come over and just like stand there. They're like, we, I'm like, you, they're like, do we have to twerk? I'm like, you don't know. <laughs> they're like, we don't know how to do that. I feel like we're just going to make a fool out of ourselves. I was like, I promise you won't make a fool out of yourself. <laughs> just stand there and look cute. Like, Ah, uh, there she's it. I think it's such a good video. Um, so are there any other projects that you're working on for this Covered 19 series, either an original or an upcoming cover that we can look Yeah, well, so we're, it's in the talks because now we're starting to, um, the album's almost pretty much done, like the track list is there and stuff like that. We're just kind of doing final touches on a bunch of tracks. And um, so we're trying to decide of whether or not we're just going to go into album campaign or if we're going to release um, some more music from the covered 19 thing. But if we do, it'll probably be a cover. And I already have the cover done because we were in the process of releasing it. And then this whole, you know, political climate thing with the Black Lives Matter happened. And I just felt like it was not the right time for the cover that I was doing to, to release it. And I wanted to release something that actually kind of would, you know, aid to to Black Lives Matter and all that stuff. So um, we'll see. I'm kind of leaning more towards releasing the cover now because if I don't release it and we start the campaign, then I, I'll have to release it next year. And I don't want to wait that long to release it. Like I want to just, I want to put it out and then have it out. It's like a summer bob and then, you know, move on. But we'll see. I have to, it's like a conversation I have to have with my label. And see all right, what if you're listening, think. if you're watching guys. We <laughs> They're, they're the like marketing gods. I don't really know. I'm kind of just like the person that's like, let me do what my gut is telling me. Type <laughs> like, Yo, numbers, this, algorithms, this. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> All, right, <I> <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, my guest is Amber Mark. Her Covered 19 series is continuing. We've got a couple of singles that we are playing here on Indie 1023. Amber, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me.